Hey guys, it's Ken here from OK Portugal and I have a really beautiful property to show you today. Now we are in a place called Celo Rico de Beira, which is on the north side of the Serra de Estrela mountain range, which is the tallest mountain range in mainland Portugal. It stretches up to about 2000 meters. Now only two hours away from here is the big city of Porto, which is in the north of Portugal. If you go southwest, you can reach Lisbon in three hours. And if you go to the east, you can reach the capital of Spain, Madrid, in just under four hours. And uh, finally, if you want to get down to the Algarve, if you want to go to all those nice beaches, it's five hours away. So this is the entrance to the property. It's, it's really nice and wide. Uh, the owner was telling me that um, they actually got a massive trailer through here with a digger that did a whole bunch of groundworks in here. You could fit caravans through here, big cars, motorhomes, all sorts of stuff. So nice big entrance all made in this beautiful granite stone wall, as you can see. And this stretches all the way around the property, which is just over 2.2 hectares. We've got six wells. We've got two big granite water tanks. We've got lots and lots of water on the land. There's a beautiful river that runs all the way through. There's a house, which is just behind this huge tree over here. The house is in full need of renovation. Um, there were actually people living in the house up to four years ago. Um, it is a registered house, a registered habitation. Uh, it's got a post box outside. Um, we've got electricity that's right next to the property, as you can see by the big um, sort of electricity pile on here. So it's very easy to get electricity to the house. And uh, there's also, um, mobile phone, internet access, and also the ability to get fiber optic broadband that you can get that down to the house. So that's all covered quite nicely. Now the land itself is actually in a little bit of a valley. And just in front of me over here is the castle of Celerico de Beira. And that's perched up just on the hill over here, overlooking this entire valley. It's only two kilometers away. So if you walk up this road, um, you can basically get to this village um, where you're gonna find shops, cafes, supermarkets, um, there's like well like petrol station, there's a train station and also a bus station. So you've got all of your amenities there. A short little walk down and then you've got this beautiful bit of land over here with some lovely views and it's all quite sheltered and peaceful and nice. All right, so I'm gonna take you on a nice in-depth walking tour as I'm sure you guys are used to of this place. Uh, if you do want any more information about this property, then obviously have a look in the description just below the video, inside the description on YouTube and also the top pin comment. I'm gonna put a link to the um, seller's sort of website where they're basically showing all of the property listings and things like that. And turning around, this is a look at the entrance again and the stone wall that goes all the way up to the top there, all the way back around and gives you 2.2 hectares in space. All right, so as we walk in, We've got this beautiful olive tree. It's huge, absolutely huge. I'd say it's about five meters tall, a nice big mature tree. We've got the border wall, which stretches along here. And then we have another tree. I'm not sure what type of tree this is, but it's absolutely massive. And it's giving some really nice shade onto, well, on a day like today, because right now it's 28 degrees Celsius. It's actually the hottest day of the year. And it's absolutely beautiful over here. We've just come out of a really cold winter. So it's a real pleasure to be walking around a farm like this today in this stunning weather. So there's a couple of accesses because we've got a stream that runs through the center of the property. And this is one of the old uh, granite stone bridges. Look at that, I mean, look at these huge slabs. And uh, if we look over this side of the wall, you can see how the water's flowing through here. We can also hear the birds, listen to that. That is amazing. In this lovely, lush, dense, green and wet area. So the owner wanted me to point out that there's actually water on the property all year round. Um, I'm not sure if this stream is going to run all year round. This could dry, but there's lots more water and you'll see that in a moment. But here's another look at the, at the stream and that runs kind of through the center of the property. And I'll show you on a map where that is now and also um, where we are on a map. But it looks so nice now. The water is very clean and clear. Some nice river sand in there and very nicely maintained walls on either side. Okay, so I think we're gonna go through the house first and then we're gonna go onto the land. Definitely stick around for when we do the land tour because there's a lot of very cool stuff to show you up there and uh, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So this is the house. Um, the owner was telling me it's 241 square meters. That's including the top and bottom floor. Um, the whole thing is urban. So it's on an urban piece of land. Now that's quite important because you can only build on urban land and the house is also registered. So you can get a building project to basically either renovate this or knock it down and start again. And you've got a really nice space to do that in. Now, I would probably go the renovation route because we've got some really beautiful granite stone walls. And I'll show you, I'll show you all of those a little bit closer in a moment. But I also want to show you a drawing. It's like a 3D CAD drawing that the sellers made 
of potentially what this project could look like. And uh, yeah, I think it's got a lot of potential for sure. So the very first part of the building we're going to go into is almost like a, like a barn area. But the owner was telling me that this is actually built on urban land and not agricultural land. So there's this big open barn space over here we can see. Look at these huge granite slabs, like really nice granite slabs. And they're also very um, straight and flush. It's been very well built. And those will look incredible. Um, the actual building itself, as you'll see up here and also on the front of the building in a bit, they have rendered it in um, plaster, but you can take the plaster off quite easily and you can show all of these stones again. And if we look around to the left here, we can see a little bit more of the stonework. It's also a very nice stonework over here. Um, you know, this was like a barn area, so we've got like an old trough in here. We've got some old bedding material and a feeding ring. Uh, I'll take you through here and show you a bit more. Let me see if I can get over this. Um, all right. Look at these big slabs or big rocks. So this downstairs part is all built into the rock. And it's quite dark down here, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of what's going on. So we've got like a feeding trough in this corner. And if I stand in this corner here, we've got a sort of a rectangular shape and then a really big rock sticking out of the wall here. So an interesting area, like potentially could be, I don't know, a bathroom or something. Uh, I'm really not sure. There's so many different things that could be done. And then again, look at this big slab going through. Now bear in mind, this is a barn. This is not where someone lived. Um, but as I said, it is urban, so you can legally rebuild this as a livable space. All right, so we're gonna go through here. We're gonna start to get to the more habitable parts of the building in a bit. So don't you worry. Hey, look, it's got big wide opening doors. Look at the stonework going around the doorways here. Cool. So, okay, it's a good start so far. Let's see the rest. Now, looking back at where we just come from, we've got this roof section. And in the plans that, um, that the current seller has in his 3D drawings, this is actually like a big roof terrace area, which I think works quite well. And there's also an entrance that you can see from here. And I'll show you once we get into the building. And um, we're actually going to start uh, on the bottom of the building, which is like a big cellar area. You can see it's a big rectangular shape, two doors, two big windows. And as we go inside here, the first thing I notice is we've got this beautiful, almost Roman road looking surface. Now, earlier on, I was actually walking around um, up on the road there, and there's actually an old Roman road that's on your way to the village. And it's the most beautiful looking thing. I'll show you some footage of that now. So an old Roman road, it actually looks not too dissimilar from the flooring inside this, this well, this building. So yeah, this is a big cellar space. This is the downstairs cellar area. Um, the, uh, the seller of the building wanted me to point out that it's got some of the old original oak wine barrels there, because actually this used to be, a, well, like a wine farm. It was a big vineyard. And I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, but also another thing we're showing you guys is this space here. So where the window is, um, you could actually make a door here. And this door can take you into the area where we've just come. So potentially you could have another living area down here or a kitchen and a bathroom down here. And this could be like the doorway. And if we look up here, this would be the sort of terrace area. And look at the views up on the castle there. All right, now let me just have a look in the other corner over here and see what this is. It's like a big brick structure here. I think this is probably um, the footing for a fireplace upstairs. I was wondering if there was a fireplace ne uh, next to it, but yeah, so this will be the footing. I'm guessing there's probably a fireplace just upstairs in the main house. But anyway, let me swing you around here and just show you what this space looks like. So imagine you've got this nice big space in total 241 square meters, um, you know, with this annex building here. Two doors entering and really nice brickwork or rock stonework, all like all the way around. Very, very nice. Okay, so the actual front entrance of the property is on this side. Let me stand back a little bit and then you can see it like a lot better. So we've got some steps leading up. Now he's got some 3D renders of what it could potentially look like. And yeah, look at these stones from the outside. We can see them a bit better here. 
really huge pieces and they're going to look so nice when they're pointed up. This is also quite a nice little feature here, this little water bowl. Okay, so granite stairs going up through the front door and bear in mind that this house obviously is in full need of renovation. Got a, we've got an old door on here. Apparently someone lived in here four years ago. So, yeah. But, yeah, this is the space. I think, um, let's start on this side over here. That'll be the fireplace I was talking about. And as we can see through here, we've got some windows that look out the back. This is sort of towards the back of the farm. Really nice views looking out that, that way. And there seems to be some kind of an attic space that's all netted off. But yeah, I mean, I think this whole, this whole part here definitely needs a full remodel. And as you can see, the floors, I'm not sure if the floor is too safe to walk in on this pot. So I'm just going to show you what this room looks like from here. But obviously, we've got some very nice views going out in this direction. And if we go a bit further, we've got another room over here. Quite a lot of space, a lot of rooms, actually. And then if we look through here, this is sort of the front of the house. And we're looking at Celerica de Beira. And he was saying that the farm is south facing. So the fields are covered in sun all day long and they're nice and fertile because they're at the bottom of the valley. And obviously we're going to have the same views coming out of this side, but this will give us a look over the roof of that barn area. And this section here is going to make a really nice roof terrace, obviously with all those lovely views again. So yeah, a lot of potential. Um, and then this is the windows out the side. And down there is where that, where the stream were, were, well, was running and we heard all those beautiful sounds of the birds, it's all green and lush. So again, if you are interested in, um, you know, connecting with the seller of, the, the, well, of this property, finding out more information, then have a look in the video description just below. Uh, I've obviously put all of his contact details and I've also put a link to where this property is listed. And I believe he said he has another couple of properties. So if you wanna have a look at those, check in the video description. All right, let's head on down the granite stairs and let's see what's going on here. So, as I said, the whole property is bordered by a stone wall. This is a very short wall on this side, but along this back of the property, you can see we've got a really tall wall and that just goes all the way into that opposite corner over there. About three weeks ago, he came here with um, some diggers and uh, tractors probably and you know they basically cut all the grass and they got rid of brambles and they did all sorts of stuff so at the moment everything is kind of um you know you can see the the treads and everything there actually wasn't any grass or anything here a couple of weeks ago and it's all kind of gone green again so yeah it's looking pretty good but imagine if this place was landscaped if you were living here and you were landscaping it just how beautiful it could be all right so i'm just giving you a view of the house from this side at the back see the steps going up and you can also see where the annex building is and where the roof terrace is and now I'm going to take you on a tour around the land so there's quite a lot to see we've got 2.2 hectares we've got six wells we've obviously got that beautiful stream running through there's actually a couple of streams cutting through the property over here we can see there's lots and lots of water it's it's been a very wet winter and spring uh, or beginning of spring and as you can see we have lots of water on the land now this is because it's been cleaned and cleared with um, like diggers and tractors and things but what happens on land like this is because we're at the bottom of the valley the water kind of comes through comes through the walls and things and you can make these lovely little streams that all connect now i'm going to get around this section here and i'm going to take you to one of my favorite little features this is actually the first time i've ever seen the farm um, i did get some information about the farm and a couple of pictures and things from the cellar um, but this is like the first time I've actually walked around so one of the first places that we went was just up here it's a higher point on the land it's not the highest point but it's quite special because it's got all of these granite rocks big boulders it's like a big sort of rockery area and I'm just going to walk through here now so you can so you can see just how awesome that this looks. I love all of this lichen and moss 
and all of the stuff growing on it. But yeah, look at these rocks. Big boulders. And they give you a beautiful commanding view of the land all the way from this side and stretching all the way down back to the house. Cool, so we're gonna go along the sort of wall side here. I mean, this wall is amazing, look at this. It's really straight and well built. And it stretches all the way down, the whole property's walled. And yeah, as I was saying, imagine if this place is actually, you know, looked after and landscaped, it's gonna be absolutely stunning up here. I mean, it already looks beautiful and we've just had diggers and almost like bulldozers coming through, you know, so imagine. Now on the left over here is something called a Nora, and I'll show you that in a bit. It's an old well that's basically powered by a donkey or, a, or an ox or a cow or something. And what that's used for is to fill concrete tanks. I believe the owner was saying that this tank's about 17,000 liters. So a really big tank. I called it a concrete tank and actually that's a mistake because this is not concrete. These are granite slabs. So you don't really see wells like this anymore because it's too expensive to build something with massive granite slabs this size. But you've got 17,000 liters and this would make an amazing way of drip irrigating this whole flat terraced field area or, or potentially just having this as a pool or a pond or a wetland area. So it's a really nice feature to have on the land. And I'm gonna carry on going down in this direction because there's something else over here that I wanna show you. Now, as they've been clearing the land, they've been quite sympathetic to a lot of the trees and things that, well, that are here and that are growing here and they've pruned them quite well. So this is one of the six wells on the property. Um, and now this isn't a stone lined well, that, like this is more of a natural dugout well. And it's fed from this little stream over here, as you can see. The water is actually quite clear, but we do have quite a bit of algae in here, obviously, because it's getting direct sunlight. Um, but this runs through here in a straight line and connects up with this stream running through the center of the property. And there's also a little bit of the stream that then runs in this direction and goes to this water tank over here. Now, I wanna take you to this corner of the land instead of zigzagging all over the place. I'm trying to do this in a nice structured way so that it's easy for you guys to follow along. But I'm also gonna show you on a map exactly where we are right now so that you can you know, see, what, well, see what's going on. But just in front over here, we have Another nice feature. It's another little stream that's running along the wall here. And that stream, let's catch up with it, is basically, as you can see, very clean and clear. Really, really nice. That runs down here onto this lower terrace. And let me just get down here so you can see. And you can hear the water flowing over the edge here and then running down in this direction where it then joins up with the stream. Potentially you could use this water to gravity feed into that tank over there and then overflow out of that, well, that tank and then go into the stream. So there's quite a few options that you can do shifting water around the farm. And as you can see, the water looks quite clean and clear and really, really pretty. One of the things I'm really enjoying as I'm walking around the land here is listening to all of this trickling running water. Now I'm wearing a, a special type of microphone that's basically got a very narrow um, band that only picks up my voice and basically tries, it doesn't really pick up external sounds. So you might not be hearing it as well, but yeah, there's some lovely sounds here. Looking back in that direction, we've got the house over there. We have the front entrance in this direction over here. Uh, we have that tank just down here somewhere, that well just over there. We've kind of walked up this way and we can kind of see the land a bit better where we've got this raised area here of terrace and we have a nice big flat open section over here. And then it also extends all the way back here and we have more terraces and bigger sort of flatter areas. So nice varied land. And obviously that castle up on the hill, look at that. I like the fact that the borders and boundaries of this land are very well defined. So, you know, there's not much guesswork in figuring out what part of the land is yours. It's all got these beautiful big stone walls on them. Now there is um, another entrance to the property. It's actually a very old entrance Maybe, um, well, I don't think it's in use anymore. It doesn't look like it, but perhaps it could be used again. All right, so I'm gonna show you on a map exactly where we are right now. And this is 
this entrance. So we've got the stone wall on the side and that goes straight all the way back into the corner from where the house was. And you can see it's in very good nick still. And there's a couple of pieces like this, but I mean, this wall is so old, still standing up, no issues. You could put a gate across here. This is your other wall. So this is the limits of the property here. This stretches down here and up and back to the road. So on the other side of this wall is a sort of public right of way. And I call it a public right of way, but this wall over here is for the neighbor. This wall over here is for you. And this used to be an old public right of way. Maybe some donkey carts and people on horses and stuff used to come up and down here. But as you can see, no one uses this space anymore. It's completely, completely overgrown and no one's coming through here. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that all connects up with, um, but I'm assuming that back in the days, that was obviously a nice path taking you somewhere. And uh, well, in these days now, it's just easier just to come from the tarred road and straight in. So now I'm going to follow the wall down in this direction and I'm going to take us to another little point of interest. And while I go down there, you can just kind of see a little bit more of the, the trees and things here. I know the owner was telling me that there's a couple of cork oaks. I believe this is a little cork oak over here. Um, and there's about seven olive trees on the, on the property. And there's obviously a whole bunch of these trees. I'm not sure what these are, but he's cut them quite nicely going around where the stream is here and over here and dotted all around the property. Cool, so I'll show you on a map uh, where we are right now. And we're just walking up to yet another well. So judging from the sort of topographical map, it shows that there are six wells on the property. And this is another one of them. So as you can see from this side, it's just behind the trees here. There's so much water in it that it's overflowing and then going into the stream which is amazing, look at that. And it's got this really nice sort of fluffy algae on the top. I've never seen that before. It's almost like a little, a little, a little floating plant. It's really pretty. And then all the excess water is running into, the, into that stream. Oh, this is so lovely. On a hot day like today, just hearing all of this running water is absolute bliss. All right, I'm just gonna hop over this, this river over here, just so I can show you how it enters the, the property, sorry, the stream. It's almost like a river, it's really flowing. And this is where um, it enters the property, so over this lovely little bridge. This is the neighbor's um, wall over here, and this is this public area. And you can see it comes through there, and through these little arches, and down into this beautiful little stream. And then that just runs in a straight line right through the property. And they've got really nice straight granite walls also bordering on either side and i'm guessing that was a way of so you could keep sheep down here and you could keep animals without them getting into the river and messing up the water now the wells that i've shown you so far are obviously very basic sort of earth wells um, but there are better quality wells on the property as well ones that have been lined with granite stones and ones that you can actually bring back to much better condition and i just want to walk along this river for a little bit with the stream and i want to show you these trees and as I was saying, when they've come down here and when they've cut back all the sort of like the grass and the brush and everything, they've done a very good job of pruning these trees so that you get the nice straight pieces, the nice uprights, and you don't just have a gigantic mess. And also on ones like this. So this is a little peek at one of these water features. I'm not going to go there just yet, but this is what they call a Nora. And it's an old like animal powered water tank system and I'll show you how that works in a bit but we're rather going to go to uh, well to a much bigger one to show you first now as I said earlier we're sort of in a valley so we've got the main sort of town up on the top of the hill there and then we've got all of this water down here obviously this is like where all of the water comes down through the land into through all the valleys and everything and you've got um, all of the like rich fertile soil and everything that gets washed from the top grounds and ends up down here so you know it's a really nice fertile space I think you're going to have really good quality soil down here. It's going to be quite easy to grow crops and things like that in this little sort of basin area just over here. Now just in front over here, this is, um, I was standing there earlier and showing you how the water came down. And then I was also showing you where that tank was. This is the tank from the other side. And these are those rocks that we were standing on up in the very beginning. And this is the Nora that I wanted to take you to. 
before we get there, look, there's another little stream, and this connects up with, uh, well, with the other stream, and that's coming down the hill here. That's actually coming from that first well that we saw that's underneath those trees there, and also coming from the water out the side there. So just so much water just coming through this land. Now, I'm not sure whether this is going to be running in the middle of summer, but as you can see, I mean, we are in spring now. It's running very strong. Um, there's definitely wells that won't run dry, and those are dotted up all around the property here. All right, so this is the Nora. Now, it's basically a well. I'll show you the, the well part. As you can see, all the water in there. There's obviously a couple of branches and things from when they were cleaning and clearing, but the water itself actually looks very clean and clear down there. And then on top of the well, we've got this big metal structure. As you can see, we've got some gear mechanisms, and then we've got this over here. So what they would do is they would tie a donkey or an ox or something to this, and as it turns around, it turns the gear mechanisms, as you can see. And when it's doing that, it moves this gigantic wheel over here. That wheel has a chain going all the way down and it's got buckets on it. As the buckets come up, they dump the water into this little trough over here. It would overflow through here into this. This would flow through a pipe underneath the ground. The pipe would come up here and look, you can even see there's a bit of water in there. It would overflow into this little space and that had a pipe. You can see where the pipe used to go in there that pipe would then connect up with that tank, that granite tank that we saw, the 17,000 litre one. Once that tank's full, they would use that to drip irrigate this terrace here. So anything lower than the tank could be drip irrigated and that would happen in the summer. And then you could grow crops and you could grow all sorts of stuff down on this section of the farm. So it's pretty awesome to have that kind of history and those sort of historic things on your farm. I'm sure something like that could be brought back to life if you even wanted to, you know. I have seen um, some other farms where they even do have like the bucket systems and everything. So, I, you know, I think it's possibly something that could be renovated. But even if it's like sort of old state now, it does also look amazing just like that. So here's another little walkway that takes you across the river. There's a couple of them dotted from the top running down. Little easy ways that you can just walk across. And again, just look at this water. Ah, oh, so nice. Huh. Now I'm not going to cross over there because I just wanted to show you another way that you can get your um, vehicles and cars and things like that over. Obviously when we first walked to the house we went over that stone bridge and you could probably get a car over there and bikes over there and you can walk over there. Um, but if you want to get bigger stuff over there's also this bridge just over here. And I'll show you exactly where we are on a map or exactly where that bridge is on a map now. So this is made out of really thick sort of railway sleepers. Like when these things get old they get rock hard. And it's obviously given us a really nice platform, a really strong, sturdy platform that he's, well, the owner has driven his 4x4. I believe they got the digger across here and everything, so it can take a lot of weight. Um, the house is just over there. And that first stone entrance that we crossed is just over there. So I think you can take a car up there. But if you've got a ginormous car, then you probably want to take it over this little bridge access over here. And uh, oh, just look at this. Look at the stream. Now I imagine before they did all of the groundworks and before the digger came, imagine having beautiful bushes along here and beautiful things growing next to the stream. Lovely little bits of shade. And obviously just going all the way back up here again. Imagine planting lovely veggies and or planting fields of barley or corn or something like that over there. And actually, there's something I need to tell you about this big space. So you saw that wine barrel in that bottom cellar over there. The reason the owner wanted me to point it out is because um, this farm actually used to be like a vineyard. This whole big space in front of me here was all covered in vines. Um, but we're talking, they're very, very old vines. And so they weren't looked after and that's why they had to be taken out. But, you know, this is actually a perfect place to grow vines. We're south facing, you get sun the whole day long. There's actually plenty of water down here. Um, and it's a really good field for growing a vineyard. Right, so let's just do a little map check so that you guys know exactly where this is. This is another well on the property. This is a stone lined well again. This one doesn't have a Nora on it, but I mean, another access point for water. Look at this. And look how close the water is to the ground level. So as I've been walking around here, I've noticed there's some little herbs and veggies. Now this over here looks like fennel, I think. Very licorice-y and there's hints of other little veggies. So I think they possibly had some little veggies down here at one stage. 
this is a look back at that Nora over there and the trees and the lovely little shade that you get on this side of the river or stream area. Now we're going to walk up just over there to that other Nora. I'm going to show you on a map exactly where that is now. And here it is. So it's also raised above the ground so that there's a, a walk around space for the donkey or the cow. Now unfortunately this one, the actual mechanism is in much worse condition, but up here it probably had a plank of wood going through then you'd attach the cow or the donkey and then they'd walk around and it would also use buckets. And you can see just look how high the water levels are. Amazing. And of course these noras are used to pump water out, but then you have to put the water somewhere. So just in front over here is another granite tank and we're just going to go across there now. Again this one is built in granite, so you know it's not made out of brick, it's not made out of cement, huge granite slabs. And I'm thinking that you could do something quite nice with that. You could turn it into a, well it could be a little dipping pool, it could be a little water feature, it could be something that's used for drip irrigating vegetables, it could be a little place for wildlife, it could be absolutely amazing. Right so I'm going to walk up to the very top corner of the land now and uh, this is kind of like the highest point of the land so we're going to get a really nice view from up there. I mean I've only walked a bit and already we can see the tank over here, we can see all the stonework and we can see the noras, we can see back in the direction of the house. Really really nice views back up here. Now if you think there was only one stream, there's actually another stream up here, I totally forgot about it, look at this. So <laughs> coming out the wall there we've got some more water that like makes its way down, goes around here and then zigzags back and then runs all the way down there back to where the house is. And again just looks very clean and clear, lovely sounds. Let me just step over quickly and take us up into this corner over here and give you some views. And this over here is coming from out the wall over there but there's also another well just in the corner of the property here. I'll have a look at this, really pretty. So it's covered in duckweed at the moment and shade but I'm pretty sure the water is going to be very clean and clear under there because the sunlight can't get through and I just love all of this vegetation around it and just look how these little streams run down. It is so pretty and look, look at the views. So we're looking back from the very top here, house in the background. This is the wall of the farm leading down and look at the views in the background there, it's uninterrupted, there's no sort of big houses looking at you or anything like that. Really really nice. I'm just going to cross over and show you the last piece just up on this side over here. Um, this is, I haven't actually walked on this section yet so I'm trying to find a path through it. But we've got this pipe that basically gets this fresh water, this is the pipe that runs underneath the road and then that makes the river here and then we have a terrace that steps up over here and joins in with the land. I'm going to go up onto that terrace now um, just so that I can show you what everything looks like from up on that point. And there's a little climb up onto this stage as you can see all nice and flat. You've got a couple more trees dotted about the place and if we look back now this is this terrace section and this part of the wall over here, this is the part of the wall that goes along the road. You can see it's a much newer wall that's the border of the property, that's the corner of the property and then it goes along in a straight line all the way down at that corner where I said there was an old sort of entrance area and this is the only neighboring house it's kind of right on the far wall so it's on the completely the opposite side of the farm to where you, the house is is this house over here and they've done a very good job it's a nice kind of a new build quite tastefully done a bit of granite stones in it um, and then the only other thing is obviously the big castle in the background and that's two kilometers away. So you're really not like overlooked by tons of houses, you're quite private down here. It's very nice and quiet down here. Uh, there's only been I would say about two or three cars that have gone down this track since I've been here but they've been going very slowly. It's not a busy road or a fast road. Um, you are surrounded. Wherever you go you, you can hear this running water which is an absolute blessing. I'm, I'm boiling hot as you can see, I'm probably sweating a lot. But um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure to walk around a farm like this. I think for the right buyer, uh, for someone that's not scared of a renovation project, 
um, you can make a really amazing house out of this place. I mean, obviously going by the 3D sort of renders that, or the CAD renders that the seller's done, I think you can make a beautiful place here. Imagine with the swimming pool and the roof terrace and just what the house looks like. And, uh, you know, the rest of the farm has been really well done. Like the, the stone walls that are all around the farm here, all of these walls are beautiful and they're actually in really good condition considering just how old they are. You know, there's a real sort of feeling of history and, you know, especially with this big medieval castle sat up on the hill looking down on you. You know, I think this is a great area for walking. Obviously, there's that Camino de Santiago. Um, it's also going to be a great area for like cycling, for running. Only two kilometers away and you can go to the local pub or you can, you know, even go further. You can hop on a train with your bicycle and, and go even further abroad. So, you know, and then of course, you've got all of these uh, road connections and everything taking you to all the big cities and beaches and other countries, you know, capital cities like Madrid in four hours. So yeah, a really nice, interesting place. I think, I think I've covered it all really. But, uh, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below. And, you know, if you do have any questions about the property or if you are interested in buying this, this property, obviously contact the seller. I'm putting his details in the video description just below this YouTube video and also in the top pinned comment on YouTube. It's gonna have all of his details, email address, contact number, um, where, you know, website address. So yeah, I think I've covered absolutely everything. And I just wanna say a big thank you to Dennis, the seller. Thank you for hiring me to uh, look at this piece of land. I've really enjoyed it. It's been an awesome day and we'll catch you guys in the next one. All the best, ciao.